Hello, introducing Acorn 3. It does just about everything but windows. Open her up and you see that here we got all the projects or pictures that I have opened up in Acorn. And this is the last one. And don't click on it. And there we are. What I want to show you first though <coughs> is in the help menu. You have this here that says Rebug, report bugs or feature request. Now you get this little window. You got your feedback title. Gives you your email address. And then if you had a problem you tell them what you did what happened and what do you expect it to happen? What do you expect it to happen? Um, it tells you here your max specs and you just hit send and away it goes to fly and meet. And also if Acorn just happens to crash, which it doesn't seem to, you will, uh, when you reopen it, you'll get something like this, and uh, you can put a title there, and it'll ask you what happened when this crashed. And underneath here, you will get a, a log report that'll um, help Gus in determining what went wrong. And um, you usually get a reply the same day, if not the next day, because you might have to check it out a little bit. Um, but you can also put your what your request would be in here. Very, very nice customer piece of work here. Okay, <clears throat> now here we'll go to this layer, it's this one right here. Um, in your filters, you got all your regular filters here, color adjustments, color effects, distortions, generators. Uh, um, here, I like this one here. We'll go for generator. Oops. Render clouds. Okay, now what's nice about this cloud generator is you can scale it. Okay, you can also you can do different things with it. And if you want to do something well else with it. Let's say we'll use distortion and I want to twirl it, select it, and there you go, you got your twirl. And you just uh, adjust it here and adjust your radius, angle maybe. Okay, let's say we want to put something else in there. Um, how about if we do tile effect? We'll do a kaleidoscope. Select. And then we got our kaleidoscope started. And our twirl is also still in there. So we can go to our twirl, mess around with that. So you can, and you can put more up in there if you want. And here you got presets. I got one for photo edit. And here's all your photo edits. Because now that I did that, I took away my clouds one. But I put all these in here so I can edit photos. You put your stuff in there, create a preset, edit a preset. So that's a pretty, pretty nifty thing there. Okay.
Now um, we'll go into on this one here. We'll get rid of this one. Uh, we'll leave that one there. This one here, which is this one. We'll go into uh, filter. We got stylize. We got drop shadow. But I don't want to do drop shadow first. I want to do inner shadow. Check that out. Inner shadow. I hit select and raise up the blur status a bit. Hardness or the opacity. And we'll put in here zero. In here zero. That straightens it out. I can change the color of it if I want. Darker red, no. Let's try a blue. No, how about a bright yellow? Okay, so you can do all kinds of things with that. We'll just go back to black. And then I want to add a drop shadow now. Drop shadow, select. See, now I got a drop shadow. And now well, we'll just move it around. And we got our drop shadow. And you can mess with the opacity, make it darker, make it lighter. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, let's just put in another one here. Uh, distortion effect. Um, glass distortion. There we go. Glass distortion. Now let's put in another special one in stylize. Bevel. Look at this. Bevel. Okay. Select. And bevel. It does all kinds of things to bevel. You can make water out of it. And then you got a tight overlay. Change a little darker. And eh, pretty cool, huh? Okay. Now you got your brushes. Different kinds of brushes here. And you can actually see what they are and not have to guess what they are. Eraser, you got soft, spattered, and square eraser. You got pen tools, pencil, shapes, space, watercolor. And you can also open up the brush designer and do all kinds of things, change the blending mode, rotate the brush, use tablet pressure for opacity and use tablet pressure for stroke width. And you can even adjust your pressure range. Or you can drag in an image and use that for a brush. Okay, you got your eraser, you got regular eraser, you got your magic wand eraser, okay, and you got your gradients, you can add a gradient there if you want, you can change the colors, and adjust the sides, okay, and then you have like your smudge tool, do all kinds of things with that. Okay. And you can use tablet pressure if you want. You also got your dodge tool. You can adjust the size, tablet pressure, and exposure. And then you can do your highlights, midtones, and shadows. And you also got your burn tool that's got the same adjustments and you got your clone tool you can use tablet pressure and you got your zoom tool you got your move tool here you got your 
selection tools and even a magic wand to select. And you can cor corner radius. So here I got it set at 30. Zero. Just make a regular square. Okay. And then you got your text, baseline, kerning, line height, space, align, stroke, characters, and you got your fill bucket, tolerance you can put on there. Oh yeah, with here. You select that, opacity, um, selection tool, if you select that one, one tolerance here, which is uh, really nice. It doesn't just show you the tolerance as you go. Um, then this one here, get rid of that one, select there, highlight there. Here you got your shapes tool. And you know, you can just do that. Whoop de do, right? Now, go on to here. It. Make it as a. Make it as a convert to brazier shape. You can add a brazier shape and. Oh, there's a house. How about that? Created a house. You can do things there. And select it. Change it. And you can do all kinds of things with that. And you can go for your fill corner radius for when you do your squares and such and snap to pixels angle here's where you might want specifics if you're into the numbers style solid or different lines or even make a custom one here's for your shadow and so it gives you a shadow there and you can place it where you want to and darkness and okay um, the other thing is we're on to go to the, this layer here and give it the layer styles. I know a lot of people like that and want that. Here you got some add filters. Same here. You got them. These are the filters and these are different filters. Um, and you can choose a preset. This fuzzy stroke is kind of neat. You got that in stylize. And oh, I got this. But you um, boom. You got your bloom that comes up. Uh, say you want to do bloom again or let's say bevel. Adjust your bevel. That looks almost like a bar of soap. Um, but then you can save layer style, export it, preset, uh, deselect. Now when you export it, you can export it and um, then you can send it to one of your friends that use Acorn and they can um, use that preset too. So collect them all. Make, share, and collect them all. Okay. And we got a little FX data here. That's all we got to do is click on it and we get this. And I can take the bloom out of it. And take the extra bevel out of it. Okay. Uh, the other thing that um, Acorn does is it has an open source part where you can, if you write Apple Script, um, Automator, Just Talk, 
This is a script, Python, um, Python plugins you can make for it. Um, you can also do, I think there might be something with Java into it. I'm not sure on that one. But I'll be giving the links of everything down below. Um, and Gus provides all kinds of information about how to write these other plugins. It, um, it's an excellent, great software. Uh, you can add your layer masks. You got layer styles. You can dis disable layer styles. Now, if I want to lock this layer, layer style, go up to here and commit layer. And there we go, it's committed. Can't do no more, no less. I really feel that you'll like this program. It's got excellent, excellent customer service. Um, and I th think that's about it. Uh, the majors, anyway. There's plenty of other things to play with. So, have fun.